Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Mooley. Boy, do we have a nail-biting episode for you today. Her name is Alison Bertha, and you may have heard her famous story of surviving a horrible attack in the 90s that left her on the brink of death. Her story is being made into a film, and she's here to share more about it. We also take a look at a youth organization called Life Choices that aims to uplift at-risk youth through telling the success stories of young people in the different communities of Cape Town. And for Winner Home on Afternoon Express today, our design contestants chat master bed bedroom plans with their mentors and we chat to our finance expert Tim Akinusi about how to protect our homes during financial challenges. Dan's in the kitchen looking spiffy. Oh, thank you so much, Bonnie. Yes, good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. We are finally in the kitchen, and all my years of cooking on Afternoon Express, we haven't made the one dessert that is my absolute favorite. This is my kryptonite, and today, joining us in the loft as our kitchen and our guest chef today is Chiara Turilli, and she always makes the most delicious treats that we've ever had on Afternoon Express, and today, we're going all out. Yes, we're going to make a chocolate espresso mousse. Oh, yum. So it's not just the basic chocolate mousse, which is my favorite. That and creme brulee, I think, play up with each other. They are the, my two favorites so far. Definitely. But today, because we're both Italian, we're throwing an Italian twist and turning it into an espresso mousse. <laughs> so if you guys want to get the recipe and the shopping list, it's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and get cooking the delicious treats we make on Afternoon Express. Now, Jeannie and Bonnie are standing by on the couch with our first guest. Thanks, Danilo. Mother, author, and survivor. Joining us in our loft is an extraordinary woman who, after surviving a horrific attack, which left her on the verge of death, has used her experience to educate those around her. The long-awaited film of her story is to be released later this year. Please welcome Alison Buerta. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you. Nice to be here. Lovely, Lovely to have you with us, Alison. So many South Africans are familiar with your story, but for those of the viewers who haven't heard the story before, can you just take us to the event? of that fateful night in 1994. Yeah, I mean, I, I find it easy to talk about you, Martha, because it's quite horrific. I, mean, I, was, I was 27 at the time, uh, just parked outside my house, very careless. I was very careless. I never locked my car doors. And uh, suddenly a guy just appeared there. He, opened, he was looking for someone. Put a knife to my throat and just said to me, move over or so I'll kill you. And, you know, you never know how you're going to react in a situation like that. But what I did is just to stay calm, to do nothing to make him angry. I thought it would just be, he didn't tell me at the time what he was planning to do with me. But what they had planned was to rape and kill their victim. He picked up a friend, the two, it was two white men. And they took me to the bushes um, in the outskirts of PE. This happened in Port Elizabeth. Uh, a bushy area, dark area. They, they, I hoped that it was only going to be rape. Because when they said to me, are you going to fight us? I thought, well, I can get through rape. I can surely, if I can just switch off, I can get through it. Um, but they had planned to actually kill their victim. So after the rape, they strangled me. Um, fortunately, I was unconscious through most of the injuries because they then stabbed me in the abdomen about 35, 36 times, they, the doctors found out, and then cut my throat 16 times. So it's a miracle that I survived it physically. And I think that's why my story became known in South Africa at the time. But maybe it stayed in people's minds because of the... Yeah, they, were, they were caught and they were, went to jail for life. But I think also I, was, I wanted to talk about it, not just to, um, to talk about the experience and help people in a similar experience, but just to, there's so much learning in these things, you know, and that, that's what I found. And, and yeah. the more I talked about it, the more um, healing I got myself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listening to your story, I just, it's so easy to get filled with anger and hate. Mm. How is it that you were able to process it and overcome it without taking a turn for the worst, I suppose? Instead, you came out tops. It, it's easy to do, and mm. I did do it for a while. I mean, I was angry, and I did blame. I went through depression. Um, after the trial and after the court case, and they went to jail for life, suddenly everyone else went on, on with their lives, and I had this life that had changed irreversibly and I didn't know what to do with it. Mm. And, I, and I fell into a deep depression then not knowing what to do with it. And um, with therapy and time, and I think it was just, a, in the end, it's a choice that you have to make. And yeah. I think, I remember asking myself though, in the pit of that depression, I said to myself, on the night when you had to fight and choose life or death, you chose life. Mm. And I, I just said to myself, you know, blaming them now for how you're feeling, they're gone. They, they've had their power. They had their moment. Yeah. But if I, if I go on hating and if I go on, you know, being angry, they're going to have power over me now. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the, it's, it, I try and share that with people because they're people who hurt us all the time. They're going to be people who, yeah. and, and, and by holding on to hatred, by holding on to those negative emotions, yeah. it's easier to do because you yeah. feel you have a right That's to them, you know, yeah. how could I not? But 
by releasing them, you release yourself. Yeah. You know, you said something interesting. You said you were careless that night. Mm. And then I, I thought to myself immediately, it feels like no matter how careful you would have been that night, yeah, this is possibly. what these men set out to do. No. And having said that then, how do we equip ourselves as women living in a, mm. in a country that's treacherous for women's, to women's safety? Like mm. whether it's cat calling on the street, whistling yeah. to getting smacked on the bum or just or getting raped. I know. You know, you, know I, you cannot protect yourself from every situation. You just can't. I know that. I do think that we, awareness is a good thing. I do think that speaking about it is a, is, a, is, a, is a good thing for for potential victims to be warned and to be wary, um, but also just for a society. And it's and it's not what I've what I've found is I always want to beg the men to join us in because it's a society problem. Yeah. Men are going to have their sisters vulnerable. They're going to have their daughters vulnerable. Yeah. So it's not a women's issue that we keep on having to say. Well, how can we? What can it's we do for the women? Women. It's all, we need to, it's a and it's the way we bring up our children, yeah. so that we bring up boys who are going to be men who are going to stop other men in their circle saying no, yeah. that's not cool. But I'm fascinated about the why, because I mean, it's, it's, there's got to be a reason why these guys set out to do it. I mean, is it? I mean, were they on drugs or were they Satanists? I no. mean, what is the... Yeah, they said later they were Satanists, but quite honestly, you know, I, I spent a lot of my time in my therapy when I was struggling to get over this and trying to get a place where I could feel there's a, there's a light yeah. at the end of the tunnel. I, I spent a lot of time trying to work out what, what a psychopath is. What does it mean? Because that's yeah. what they, they came back, they, they were, they were um, diagnosed, is that right, as psychopaths? Yeah. And, I, and eventually my therapist said, you know, so he said, by trying to understand them, you're in, in a way, having to justify sure. you know way having to find a way of saying okay i understand he had a terrible yeah. upbringing that's why he's done this so yes there might have been elements of that i mean the one of them didn't have a good upbringing but the other one did so they again the choices are there no so one had a father who was a policeman and a normal as such upbringing chose to do this yeah. i think there's an inherent evil in them and possibly in other people that you know we we good people by questioning it, we almost have to find a, a way of ex accepting yeah. it. So I choose not to. Yeah. They were just. They were. They came up for parole recently, no? Yeah, it's it's, it's been a horrible time. And you uh, had to reconfront yeah. that whole. What happened? You know, for me, when the court case ended, they were going to jail for life, and I've always yeah. just that's that's how I moved on. Yes. That is what I helped me realize. What I've told my children, even and my, my children, yeah. you know, want to know about what happened. I've always been able to reassure them the baddies are caught. You know, that's kind yeah. of. Sure. Um, to now have the parole looming and things that is even an option has been a very difficult time and and sure. basically I just have to be involved I send applications I tell them why I should think they shouldn't come out they should not come out they should yeah. absolutely not. not come out yeah sure reasons. one I don't believe they're rehabilitated but yeah. even if that argument wants to come in and say okay what if they are I pay for it for the rest of my life there's nothing yeah, that exactly. can ever take away that for me have they shown any remorse no no, no remorse at all. And even if they did, it's a... I, I, I don't even know if that would change my way of thinking about it. To for me, sure, they, yeah. the, the payment is jail yeah, for life. Exactly. That's just your payment. Uh, my payment is live yeah, with this for the rest yeah. of your life. It's a choice they made, and that's the, that's the... Yeah. And as a result of your experience, what are your ideas now around freedom and how much of that, that you, you believe you still have and your ideas around men and your, your trust in them or lack of? or How do you relate to them? You know, Bonnie, I'm very lucky in, in that I had a lot of men helping me that night. It wasn't like the male population came against me. Two evil men came against me. And, and I'm very lucky in that I had immediately, when I crawled to the road with all the injuries and everything that I had, a whole group of men stopped to help me. They saved my life. They kept me alive. I got eventually to the hospital, and there were men doctors who saved my life. They, in the end, when I got to court, it was a male policeman who held my hand right through the whole thing. Yeah. So, so I haven't, luckily, I'm very fortunate, haven't you know, come to hate men. Yeah. I, um, I see them as... So, and and trust, as far as the trust thing, I think I'm more wary. I think I was very blasé then. I think I was very naive, almost to, the fault, to a fault that it was wrong. Uh, but fortunately, I've got an intrinsic belief in the good in people and I, and I like to think I've still got that in, um, as an essence there might be times when I'm a little bit more wary now mm. but um, yeah. yeah we're going to be back with you in a little while thank you so much for sharing You're your welcome. story but we're going to we're going to unpack it a little bit more after the, after the break we're going to be back with more from the inspiring Alison Butter after this break so please stay right where you are
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, I am paying very close attention to what's happening in the kitchen today because the only dessert I've always ever wanted to try and make but just felt too scared to. I've always bought it from the shelves is a delicious chocolate mousse. And joining us in the loft today, Chiara Turilli, who makes the delicious treats always. And she sells like cupcakes and cookies and things on Instagram. Today, yes. we're taking an Italian twist with a little bit of espresso in there. Always. Cool. Always got to add an Italian thing to everything. That's basically what I do. I love cooking with I know, you. me too. Let's get started. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm here to learn today. What can I do? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the egg whites and the egg yolks because we're okay. going to put them in separately and that's what makes it a nice fluffy mousse. Ah. So we're going to start off with our egg yolks. Cool. In the KitchenAid, please. Da -da. There they go. And then you can put the sugar. Oops, I'm spilling already. <coughs> Don't worry. And we're using salati caster snow, which I always have in my cupboard because there's always days where you need to make something like an icing or whatever. I mean, exactly. It's, it's always better to use. You can pretty much use it for anything. Yes, you can it's use amazing. for everything. So just put it on low. It doesn't need to mix too much. Mm -hmm. This is our chocolate that we've got here. Good quality dark chocolate is the most important thing. Okay. I like to use 70% because it hasn't got that much sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So it balances out nicely. So all we've done is we put it on a double boiler yeah. and we just melt it down, turned it off and let it cool. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to put your hot chocolate into your egg yolks, you're going to get scrambled eggs. Oh, okay, true. That's a good point. So you've oh, cool down for like, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Yes. Until it's not just not... Exactly. And you can see here, it's still thing. melted. Also, so you do it with care and love. That's oh. what makes good food. <laughs> exactly. That's the Italian way, right? Also, we just don't want to mess up our beautiful little device here. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what the carefulness is all about. Okay. Explain to me, you, you, where are the egg whites? I'm very confused. Does that happen later? Yes, that's later. Oh, that's I the final see. touch. So this has got basically just a quick little recap. It's got some of the uh, caster snow in here. Salati's caster snow is in there. We've got um, our egg yolks yes. and now the chocolate we've exactly. melted. Exactly. Okay. On the bowl. All the amounts and stuff on the website, by the way, if you're wondering. What's next? You can take that bowl out for us. Cool. Oh, first we'll take this off. Hey. Yes, you just gotta lift that up. Exactly. Oh, I want How all of that stuff. How do you like scoop that bit out? Yum. Exactly like that. Ooh, Perfect. yummy. Oh no, this is gonna end so badly. Oh gosh. <laughs> I know you're gonna come back to that later. <laughs> yes. Okay, oh I am. Don't you worry. Don't drip. Don't drip. Save it all. Cool, what's okay, next? Okay, so now we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cream in. So we have it to a, a soft peak stage and we're just gonna mix it in in about three different parts. So you can put it in very delicately. Oh wow, sure. Don't, don't, don't hate it. You can put, put a bit more than that. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, just like this. Yes, and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold it in. Okay. Everyone has their own way of folding. I learned in the bakery when I worked in Italy to fold from the middle and then pull up. Okay. Some people like to do the figure of eight. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. The most important thing is don't let go of the air. Basically just mix it up in the bowl but gently. Okay, you can okay. put some more in fast. Oh, cool. sure. It's got quite a lot of cream in it, which I yes. is new to me. Oh, that looks so good. I know. It's like you just want to eat it right now. And the other thing is, like, we're adding espresso, but mm. you can add any flavor. You can add orange, you can add cherry. And okay. I think that's the nice thing about chocolate mousse. Awesome. You can add the last bit in fast. Last little bit in yeah, and that's the last bit for now. And then later on, we're going to show you how to do the rest. Yes. Amazing. So if you guys want to get the recipe and the shopping list, it is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Uh, everything we make on Afternoon Express is over there. So if you're ever looking for ideas for, I don't know, breakfast, a lunch, or a dinner, or maybe dessert, or a starter, or something really delicious to drink. You can read all the recipes on that website. It really is a wealth of knowledge. So thanks so much for creating this. We'll show you the rest of the steps a little bit later on. Moving on from delicious treats to a really, really inspiring story. The ladies are on the couch. We're back on the couch with Alison. Alison, during the break, I thought to myself, I wanted to know what, what was that moment of commitment that happened, that took place, where what, when you were crawling and you had a choice between life and death and you were, you were going for life, what made you decide this was worth it and I'm going to do it? Was there a distinct moment? It, for me, there were two. One was even before I started crawling because they drove off and left me there for dead. And there was a moment and I hadn't moved yet and I lay there and I remember, it's hard to put into words because it's a spiritual moment in a way because I remember actually being above my body. Well, it has to be. And, and so there are no words for us yeah. that in our dictionary that describe the moment like this. We normally don't have that in our human experience. But I just remember the best I can describe it, I was, I was above her because I remember looking at her and feeling sorry for her. But at the same time, I did intrinsically know it was me and I knew I had a choice and whichever choice I made was going to be okay. I wasn't going to be judged for it. Now, I think in a way for me that I, I, don't, I don't want death to happen now, but I don't fear it in a way. I know when it happens, it's going to be part of the process and it's going to be okay for all of us, I think. Yeah. But there was another moment. Once I was, then I did go back in my body and I did try and crawl. And I then after crawling maybe five meters, I collapsed. And it was at that moment, I just wanted it to be over. I wanted to die. And I... 
there was something obviously that same spiritual self inside myself that I remember just knowing I was worth getting up for. I couldn't die. I couldn't die like this. I couldn't die now, not at their hands in a way, you know. So there were a lot of elements there, but I remember that was when I thought I have to get up. Yeah. Wow. And from that moment of getting up, that was when, you know, it wasn't easy, but I didn't once again want to die after that. Yeah. And you live to tell the story and, of course, share with so many other people across the world. And, and I think that message has been so strong. You've been the, the first, one of the first females in South Africa to be so vocal about rape. Mm. What advice would you give to women to protect themselves? What can we do to protect ourselves? And should it happen to a woman, how can we be vocal about it in a way that we don't have to? I think this because some, I think it happens to some women and they yeah. just want to hide behind and yeah. not tell anybody yeah. and yeah. just kind I of I mean, it's horrific down. that we live in a country where we even have to ask, what if it were to happen? I know. Yeah. Or a world. Yeah. But also, do you know how many young girls it happens to? And then they, they're ashamed. They, they feel maybe it was yeah. their fault. Their and fault. then they don't oh, tell Virginia, anybody I have, about it. I have it. people, after my talks, when I share, I think because I share so openly, yeah. it gives people the permission to do the same to me. And people yeah. come up, I have many who come up to me and say, Alison, I've never told anybody this but. And then they will tell me something. Yeah. That they've never told their husband of like 30 years, but that they were raped as a child. Oh. I had the other day a lady who was raped by her brother's friend when she was 13. She's now in her 40s. Now they live, now to me, okay, I can't get, if each situation is different, each person is different, it's not to look at me and say, well, she did that, I must do the same. Yeah. But to keep it to yourself, it will demand attention of you at some part in your life. Wow. And to me, even if you find a stranger, a priest, a counselor, a whatever you're, you feel comfortable with, yeah. talk about it to someone. Yes. What I've found is the sharing has been my healing. Yeah. Knowing that I'm helping someone maybe in sharing my story and yeah. it might help them means some good is coming out of a bad yeah. situation yeah. and they might find the same just in, a, in, a, in their circle. And you have to, don't yeah. you get so angry, sorry, when you hear about stories like this Brock Turner now in America who raped this girl and then, I don't know if you know the story, yeah. but then said, oh, but you know, it's going to damage his swimming career, it's going to damage, damage his yeah. amazing, sta amazing Stanford for 30 education. Minutes of action. And for 30 yeah. minutes of action. Yeah. And then saying, oh, she can't remember it anyway. Maybe she, maybe she, maybe she wanted it. <gasps> I mean, I'm furious. Yeah. This is sometimes why some girls think, mm, maybe I don't have a voice. Yeah. Maybe I can't say anything about what's happening to me. You know, the, we, the, the, the society, the, the things that we have to fight for in society mm. is for the victims to actually get the attention, the, the, uh, you know, the, the help along the way, yeah. that they know they come yeah. forward, that they're going to be looked after. Yeah. Because so many times you hear the stories where the victims do, they're brave enough to come forward, mm. and then the system, excuse the pun, but it rapes them again. Exactly. And they feel, wow. and then their stories stop all the others from coming forward, because they yeah. say, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. So then they'd rather not, you know, come forward. So well, story, there's a lot to be done. Yeah, your story has certainly grown lots of wings. Yeah. It's now become a documentary yeah. film which uh, recently um, showed at the Durban Film Festival. Did. What did you feel like watching the film? I'm, I'm preferring it now that I've seen it a few times because the first time you girls are used to being on TV and screen, but the first time I was like, oh no, really? You never get so, used to it. Yeah, really. <laughs> so that was my first reaction. So everyone was expecting me to give this sort of like emotional reaction, but mine was just, oh no, really? So the more times I've watched it, I've been able to enjoy the, the story of, yeah, the, of the movie. Yeah. And Ugo Carlini, who the, is the director here based in Cape Town, who I chose, has done it so well because it's got the, it's a hybrid film is what we call it because it's got elements of documentary with me speaking, which people actually mm. appreciate. They want to hear it from Definitely. me. But also the different characters who played a part, the, the Tian who found me on the road, present day Tian is there, the judge, the Aww. doctor, various people like that are in the movie. But then there's elements of feature in that there's a reenactment scenes, which is not me. Um, and there's elements of uh, animation even. It's, it's, it's along those lines of a fairy tale in, in that I start off by opening a book and saying, well, this is my story. And yeah. it's not always the happy ending that we are told as little girls you know it's yeah. not always going to be that but it's yeah. okay and we make up our story as we go and that's kind of there so it's a it's a very watchable movie yes it's about a horrific incident but people feel inspired when they walk up and that's what we wanted yeah. and of course you have a book I do. and the film rights as well yes well the book has got this is an actually an updated version this book has been was published in 1998 Marianne Tam wrote it with me but um, it's now got an updated because you know it's been a while since it was published and yeah. it's been a while since the story yeah. happened so this just has got a catch-up chapter written by me, which is a catch-up to basically to present day. I'm very curious to know how your children react to your story. And what, what do you think they take me. from it every time they... Yeah, I think they're them. proud of me as mommy and what I do. And they know I'll go off and do talks. They don't, haven't ever been and they won't see the movie yet because, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be too traumatic. But... I've used it in the way I want to bring them up. I've, I've used, I mean, the, the things that my mother taught me is what has helped me 
live, let alone, and, and, and obviously recover. And those things of and valuing thrive. yourself and believing in yourself. And no matter what happens, we choose what we do, all those things. And that's what I want to bring my boys up with so they need to know about the story you have boys i do the, I the irony boys. of what well, you that. say i take it very seriously that i need to bring up men who are going to make that be part of making that difference yeah, of not being the men who are going to make the little flippant. and you might think it's you know they might you get together with your friends in a bar and there's a flippant comment about a woman walking past and it's degrading mm -hmm. it, it is yeah. it diminishes it, it it is what society's the problem is exactly. that is the, uh, those are the gross, gross yeah. levels that we need to change yeah. thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for being on the show you are incredibly inspiring and i wish you the best on your thank journey. You. Thank you and so much. Lovely to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So make sure you keep your eyes on the box office and go and check out Alison when it releases in August. Today you stand a chance of winning a copy of I Have Life. Simply SMS the keyword books, your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost one rand fifty each, T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I'm very excited to have this next conversation because youth are so important. And South Africa has a growing population of young people with over 19 million young people right now and many of them going through difficult situations where they feel alone and maybe isolated from the rest of the world. The youth organization Life Choices has a 30 Stories in 30 Days campaign in which young people from across Cape Town share their stories to let others know that they're not alone and that there are places which can offer them help. Joining us today is Life Choices MD Sophia Neves and Simpiwe Silwana, one of the beneficiaries of the program, but now also co-board member of Life Choices. It's good to have you both with us in the loft. Thank you very much. Sophia, I've worked with you for a long period of time That's and right. <laughs> uh, you inspired me a couple of years ago to get involved with the organization, first of all, as a mentor. But before we even get into the details of, of, of this 30 Stories in 30 Days, what exactly is Life Choices and, and what do you do? Okay, we are a bold movement uh, that invests in young people to tackle inequality. Mm. So to tackle inequality is what makes us awake every single day to see a South African world um, where people have a fair chance. Mm. Um, and we do this by working with young people in low-income communities. Um, what we do is that we believe that they need essential building blocks in their lives in order that they can succeed. Mm. So we provide services in family stability, health, education, leadership and employment. Sure, so it's actually important that you guys do the sort of holistic approach to Completely. young people because I don't think there is one element in our communities. No. Where did the idea of Life Choices come about? Was there a need that you personally had found? Was it a Salesian thing that they had found? Where did the need begin? So we belong to an international movement called Salesians of, uh, of Don Bosco. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're co-business, they they're working in 132 countries sure. and they focus in young people. They see that young people is who is going to shape the future. Yeah. And if you want to have a better world, you work with young people today yeah. uh, so that they can grow to become responsible citizens. Yeah. So I think uh, there's need to work in young, with young people all over the world. Yeah. Uh, Cape Town is not an exception. Exactly. And to work in the Cape Flats has been a passion and uh, is what makes us every day smile and be inspired. Yeah. I think with the media, and speci specifically the space that I sit in, um, is you always get this viewpoint of society being the suburbs. And you, the work that you guys do is so entrenched in the communities who Completely. make up the biggest population of our country and yes. probably the most marginalized at the Completely. same time. What issues are you seeing faced there? And obviously you've mentioned a bit about how you guys are trying to alleviate that. Mm. But what are you seeing as the biggest issues with youth in our country? In the low-income communities? Mm. Where, 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 where mm. Life Choices works? I think with young, okay, in general, young people is a stage of life that is not very well understood. Mm. It seems when we grow up, we forgot what it was to be a young person. Yeah. Um, I think young people has an issue about understanding who they are. Mm. And in the communities where we work, many times they are not properly supported to, yeah. to, to explore. Uh, and explore safely. Mm. So for example, uh, one of the things we see the most is how young people is growing up in this, in this country on unsafe environments mm. and, and, and facing abuse inside their homes, not just in their communities. Um, but saying that, uh, working in these communities, like I say, inspires us every day. We see young people uh, overcoming their challenges and really being inspirational. Yeah. And I think that is what, what we are trying to do, to give a voice to young people mm. and people see their magic and see mm. their strength. Sure. One of the beauties of working in the sector that you work in is you, like you said, get to meet some of the most phenomenal people Amazing who are people. fighting battles that Completely. most people would never have even imagined. And, and you're providing them with support structures and spaces for them to 
explore yeah. who they are and to believe that they are enough and that they are okay. There we go. And hence, I think 30 Stories in 30 Days came about. There is how the campaign started. It started three years ago. It was about Youth Month. And we always hear about how people compare the youth of today with the youth of the past. Yeah. And people say the youth of the past, they were the strong ones and yeah. the new generation is lost. Mm. And we say that is not really truth. The youth of today have different struggles. Mm -hmm. They might have different names, but we see every day people being born in a victim mode and become a victor. Yeah, um, sure. So our work inspires and the campaign is born like that. We wanted to showcase 30 stories in 30 days during Youth Month, so that youth is giving a voice and they can tell the world mm. what is their struggle and, that, and how they have overcome it. Sure. So, yeah. It was an honor when I was asked to write a little story there as well, because it was so mm -hmm. reflective for me just to be able to think about the struggles that I went through and how, how that relates to somebody else. And speaking of which, I see people, um, you've also been involved with Life Choices as a beneficiary, now as a board member and studying as a student. Uh, what was your history like? Because she mentioned this idea that they really are in communities where people are struggling to get to understand themselves and know themselves. What was your personal struggle? Well, I'm from the township called Crossroads, which is in the Cape Flats. And I grew up there with my grandmother who worked as a domestic worker. So I didn't have a good relationship with my mom and my dad had an accident a few months, a few years, I mean, after I was uh, born. So I never had interaction with my dad and my mom and my mother, my grandmother, who was a domestic worker, had to work hard for me to get through to education and to rear a young boy like me in such an environment which has so many influences such as gangsterism, there's drug um, exposure in those kind of environments. So going through school, I, I was a good student, but in grade 10, growing up and not, as Sophia said, being exposed to certain things yeah. and not being exposed to the positive things, I um, ended up doing wrong things, ending up failing the year. Sure. So that was the turning point in my life whereby for the first time in my life, I had failed, and it was because of me. It was no longer about, it's my mom's fault, it's my dad's fault. It was something which I had done, and I had to take the responsibility of saying, Simpur, you must be accountable to what you have done. And Life Choices came along, and that is when they showed me the way, and they gave me the program. There's a program which they run is 100% is, um, responsibility. One of the values of a leader in Leader's Quest is 100% responsibility. So right there, I decided that, you know what, the best thing to do is to take account of my life. This is my life, and at the end of the day, I'm the one who's going to be living it. Uh, my grandparents, my mother who's not there, my, gra my father who's not there, my grandfather who's old, and I can't interact with certain things about him, about youngsters, which we usually want to interact with with our dads and all of those things. So I told myself, will I become one of the statistics? Mm. Am I going to be one of those who drop out of high school and stand in corners and do drugs? I was like, no. But let me give myself that moment of reflecting and mm. saying, you know what, you have failed. Cry, mm. suffer, so that you can make sure that tomorrow and the following year you don't go through that same pain. So the next following years, I made sure that I worked so hard because I had known the pain of mm. failure. And I wanted to make sure that I inspire other youth. And Life Choices came along and gave me that platform to say, you know what, come along, be part of the board, shape the organization, help in shaping the organization, which is youth focused. And it has been a great journey with that also being appointed at my school as a head boy, being a board member of a great organization such as Life Choices and being accepted at university to study the degree which I wanted to study. And looking back, I'm like, it was so painful. But in such a situation, I learned so much. And perhaps if I had not failed, I'm not saying it's okay to fail, but if I had not failed, maybe I would not have been aware and might not be where I am today. Sure, man. It could have so easily gone a complete another direction. Okay. And I think this is one of the things I've always tried to implement with our young people is to find themselves mentors, find themselves spaces where they can be exposed to people who are going to encourage them and grow them towards a space that's better for their lives. And I think you've done exactly that. And speaking of which, you mentioned your degree. Congrats on, on uh, entering into UCT, uh, well, studying law, not UCT though, but I, I think, is it UCT? UCT, yes, sure. studying law. And how are you managing to balance all of this? What is life like for the future of Simpiwe? 
Life of the Future of St. Pierre is, is interesting, and it's a great thing that Life Choices is there to assist me, to guide me in, in, in these paths which I want to go, because I want to get a law degree and also have political aspirations, where my ultimate goal is to become president, president. of the country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is to become president of the country, and to show that, you know, you can come from a dire background. It doesn't matter. All that needs to be done is you need to put in the work and you also yeah. need to look for help sometimes. Look for organizations which are there and are offering these services. Yeah. Because most of us youth sometimes expect things to come to us and exactly. we don't take the initiative. All the opposite would make sense where some people feel like it's unreachable for them because they're in a very different circumstance and you know everyone else got handed to them on a silver platter and things like that. And you, I think you're the perfect example of someone who didn't get that. You didn't have it all handed to you on a silver platter at the beginning. You worked hard for what you wanted to achieve and look where you are today. So that is absolutely amazing, Simpiwe. Uh, he's one of the stories, I mean, and there's so yeah. many that you want to yeah, tell with this organization. I think you've been drawn to tears a couple of times and I've seen you with the sort of passion uh, yeah. of some of these young people. And if we want to maybe read more of these stories, yeah. where can we find them? You, you can find them in our website, lifechoices.co.za, and that is the invitation. If, if South Africans don't do anything else, I think at least start to read stories of young people living in a township mm. and start to understand, uh, because I think the yeah. country is quite divided. Yeah. So start to understand people. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll develop empathy towards others. Mm. At Life Choices, we believe that inequality is a matter of the heart. So if all we were able to look at each other as human beings and understand that wealth is mm. not uh, scarce, mm. uh, wealth, there's enough wealth for everyone. Um, and doing a small thing, just by reading the stories and understand how, uh, uh, how lucky many of us are mm. in the part of the world we have been born and the part of, sure. uh, on the suburb and yeah. on the families we have mm. been born and certainly developing compassion towards yeah. others and, and activate, activate that we want to do something. Yeah. And a small thing yeah. can make a difference in the life of somebody. Exactly. And it's not a guilt thing. You're not saying to people, oh, these are terrible stories. Feel guilty about what's no, no, been created. No, no. There's, there's hope here and there's the, people who the are story, fighting. The stories are very inspirational. Yeah. They are tough stories. We have stories from human trafficking mm. to abuse, like I say. Yeah. Um, so many people cry with the stories. But uh, like I say, the theme is from victim to victor. Mm. So there's a lot of learnings and every single youth we choose is a success story. Yeah. Sure. Even, if, even if they are trying to still come out of their situations, it's still a success. Sure. Sophia, I know how hard it is to run an organization and uh, the amount of red tape that's involved with it and you guys keep moving and you've affected mm. so many lives. You've changed Definitely. mine in so many ways. So thank, thank you for you joining us on Off Simpure. Dude, continue to inspire the rest of the young people in our country. Thank you thank very you much. To you. Sure. So if you want to read any of those stories or find out more information on Life Choices, all of it will be found on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now after the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Today, our design contestants discuss master bedroom plans with their mentors, and we chat to our finance expert, Tim Akinusi. Follow three talented young designers as they transform three empty apartments on Valdivy Estate into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Cast your vote on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance to win one of the completed apartments worth more than three million rand. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now there is less than a week left for our design contestants to complete their master bedrooms. Recently they met up with their mentors to go through some ideas that will hopefully push their master bedrooms to the next level. Minentle, show me where you're at, where, where we've got to on the, the main bedroom. Um, I think we're on track at the moment. So the floor is in. We were lucky enough to have the floor installed at the same time as the other bedroom. Luck's got nothing to do with it. The harder you work, the luckier you get. <laughs> so uh, I've made sure that the floor is protected so that uh, it doesn't get damaged when we work on the rest of the stuff. At the moment, we're working on the mural. So tell me about the mural. That's what I'm most excited about. Have we, we got in touch with Nabia. You're going ahead with that? Yes, yes. Nabs is on site uh, working on the mural. 
we're going for that distressed look, which is bolder than what we had for the guest bedroom. Yeah, we so need to make Plascon happy, yeah. show them what we can do with their pets. So pet. I'm very happy about that. And then I guess it's a matter of just waiting for everything to arrive. I mean, it's a bit hair-raising with the bed coming in from Durban. The bed is like one of my main worries because it's literally going to make or break the room. So I'm very stressed about that getting on site. I think it's worth the stress, Manente. That bed's going to be beautiful. Obviously, it's picking up on the same theme as your initial bedroom. Slightly different though. The dove grey, I think, is really, it's going to feel a little bit more serene, a little bit um, more calming than the guest bedroom. If even though we're, we're taking a similar idea with the guest bedroom, so everything is going to run smooth. You and I know how much time we spend in our bedrooms. It's not just about sleeping. It's about relaxation, it's about function, it's also about getting ready for the day every morning. So you need to have everything at your disposal so that you can face the world. Also, just because of the site, where it is, where Valdeby is, you want to be able to spend as much time on that beautiful estate. So adding in a few functional elements where people can work from their bedrooms. Um, also, maybe you don't always want to read in bed. You take your read reading quite seriously. You want to be able to sit in a chair. Um, so I think for me, that's the, the importance of this bedroom. It's stylish, but it's functional. It's also the big thing about bedrooms for me is that they do have to be soothing. It has to become a sanctuary. Um, so not too tech heavy, pull back on the tech, um, but, but again, it needs to be hard working. Um, that means I better get hard working myself. Agreed. Hi! Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. A few things happened, but um, I think I'll be able to make it still. So. Oh, I'm sure. Just talk me through it and maybe we can find some solution. So the exposed cupboards are a bit too long. The one is fitting, but the other one is way too long. Oh. I'm sure your handyman will sort it out and you've got a bit of time. Yeah. Just make sure that you've got a good finish on where the two paints meet each other. Yes, yes. And I think one of the most important things to remember is you are not decorating. You are creating a lifestyle for somebody who wants to live on this fantastic estate. Yes. And just keep in mind that some real person actually has to live in this place. Okay, so tell me what is still left to do. I need to figure out uh, how to do that quickly. The, 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 the exposed the thing, cover. okay. The, the exposed cupboard. And then my concrete benches are cut too long, so I need to send them back. At least they were not cut too short. That would have been a bigger problem. <laughs> yes. I still need to style a bit and choose the right bedding. I'm not sure yet what color I'm but going I to go can, through. I can definitely help you. I think uh, for a bedroom, you need like that little bit of unexpectedness on the bed. Maybe two colors that we go. And good quality. The whole look that you're going for is understated, really good quality, so it doesn't look flashy, but it is just fabulous to live in that space. Right, how's it going? Yeah, so the paint's on the walls looking great. It okay. matches um, Natalie's artwork just perfectly. The Caesar Stone um, bedside tables are arriving soon. Okay. And we've taken that same Caesar Stone through to the main dressing room. So we're just going to slot them in there. Okay, have the bedside tables arrived? Yeah, they will arrive soon, okay. so I'm quite happy with them. They look gorgeous. Okay, and tell me about the craft house tour. Has it finally come together? It's I love so that. amazing, uh, Michelle. It's, it's just such a beautiful piece. Um, they're based in Strand. It's merino wool, and it's just going to be a uh, cellar. Not Quite good. Amazing. So that whole natural, organic, beautiful, soft look at the base of the bed. And also with the Lisa Furrow clay that we have there, I mean, those art pieces are just so stunning. Now we wanted to talk about the rug for the bedroom. I wanted to suggest to you that maybe you look at moving that rug into the dressing room area so that you've got this beautiful, quiet sanctuary, walk into this lovely, soft space, and then into that spa-like bathroom. It's a great idea. Yeah, it really is. And how's the dressing room doing? Okay, I'm still waiting on confirmation for the Ottomans. They have that black leather um, that we oh, spoke right. about. Yeah, so we have the thread going through again. And we have the metal rods, and they're gonna look amazing. They are a little bit away from the wall, mm -hmm. so we can allow for different doors to be put in at a later stage. Down the side? Basically, this whole built-in cupboard is floating in the air. I think it just adds that to the beautiful airiness to the space. And it has a beautiful paneling on either side. So what I loved about your design, which I think you should work through and do fully, is take that whole wall fe feature up and across the ceiling and down again. I think it just created this amazing room within a room. I also love Brunt's idea for a design for the pole that doesn't quite go to the end, so it, it doesn't mess with the cladding on the side. All of those details really count. So I think the dressing room needs to be Pierce the resistance. It does. <laughs> You've designed it beautifully, so go for it. Yeah. All you have to do now is meet that deadline. Yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing space. Good. Woo!
They had better get there. Move on. Only three days left to complete those master bedrooms. Now, paying off a home loan is a very expensive endeavor, especially in today's economic climate. Luckily, we have our finance expert to help us out. Due to general increases in the cost of living, homeowners and property investors are finding it increasingly difficult to keep up with expenses, home loan repayments being one of them. We have Tim Akinusi with us in the loft, who is the head of sales and client value management at Nedbank Home Loans, to guide us through the steps to take when it comes to protecting your homes when facing financial challenges. Welcome back to the loft, Tim. Thank you very much. So one of these financial challenges we mentioned could be losing your job. What steps does one take in that situation? So Bonnie, you, when we grant you a home loan, uh, we know that it's a 20 to 30 year commitment. And we expect that because it's a long period of time, you may run into some financial difficulty. So as a bank, um, what we've tried to do is to create options for individuals to be able to ride out the storm. Um, and we have both short term uh, options for um, clients who face difficulty and um, as well as some long-term options as well. The first thing that I'd like to state before I get into the options is clients should never go into default because the implications for that are, um, are quite dire, dire and they have long-term mm -hmm. implications for that. So they'll affect your ability to get credit in future when your situation does improve. Yeah. So the first thing that I would suggest is for clients to come straight to your banker and talk about your financial difficulty mm -hmm. and understand it from a long and short term perspective. Because if it's a short term difficulty, then what we can do is restructure your entire loan, which in essence is about reducing your repayments and extending the time period that you would um, need yeah. to pay back the loan. Yeah. If you believe that the long term effects of your, um, your financial situation will continue to persist, then I would suggest that um, you contact us and we have a product that we can help you sell your house and it's called mm. a net bank assisted sale. Mm -hmm. And in essence, what we'll do is put your house on the market for you and help you get the most amount of our value for it. Right. And whatever the shortfall is, we will then go a step further and forgiven 50% of that debt. So as a result of that, you then preserve your credit um, history yeah. and your credit health, yeah. and um, you're still able to get the most out of the property that yeah. you had um, initially. So what if in this instance, the financial situation doesn't let up? Barney, the first thing that we would advise our customers to do is um, to speak with us because we have financial products that will help them um, ride through the this, this storm. And one of those products is a restructure program where we basically would restructure your accounts and reduce your monthly repayments and extend the period that you'd pay the loan over. And over the last couple of years, we've helped more than 16,000 customers restructure their accounts and help them get back on their feet and to continue with the repayments of their mortgage um, loans. The second thing that we also have is a NetBank Assisted Sales Program, which aids customers in helping them to sell their homes mm -hmm. and to get the best value for it. So we've helped over 4,000 um, individuals uh, sell their homes through the Net Bank Assisted Sales Program. And that's helped preserve their credit record. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you. Don't fear when Net Bank is near. They're here to help you along the way and make sure you are taken care of. For more information, visit www.netbank.co.za forward slash home loans for more information. Sure, so fascinating. I'm taking notes and I hope you are too. Now, just remember quickly that you have until Thursday, the 14th of July to vote for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom and you stand a chance to win by doing so. Here's how. It's not called Win a Home for Nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of the three completed apartments at the Valdeby Estate, valued at over 3 million rand, by voting for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom on privateproperty.co.za. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're about to make your afternoon so much more delicious, if that's even a thing. Uh, Chiara Trilli is with us in the loft today. We're making always a delicious dessert. Today, it's an espresso chocolate mousse, which exactly. is one of my favorite desserts. Uh, so basically, so far, we've mixed most of the main ingredients together. We've got the chocolate in there. We've got the egg yolks in there. We've got the uh, across the snow in yes. there, which has been great. Now, we're going to do the rest. Yes. So we basically just lightly folded in the cream. What the cream does is it loosens up the mixture, which mm -hmm. is getting ready for our two most important ingredients. Okay. This is the espresso. Oh, okay. Go 
going very in. Important. Are you it's ready? Like vital. It's like the big guns. I feel like we should have a theme song for this. I know. Da, 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 da. No, I'm just doing the Italian hands because I was like, I'm not sure what you're singing there. <laughs> so in here, we just put the espresso. Mm. And the thing is that you can either add espresso or you can add two tablespoons of coffee. <laughs> So now and we're just gonna soft peak, soft peach stage for this, and yeah. then you just you just whip up the egg whites to soft peak stage. What a soft peak stage! That's this. yes. Okay. The reason is if you do it stiff, it will be so difficult to fold in, and you'll lose all your air. Does it just pour it all in? No, but oh, by bit, please. By bit. Sorry, yeah. It's very important. Here's the art. folding again. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's just more folding you're doing yes. right now. Okay, I see how this works. Well, it's almost like ice cream. This it's like um, sorbet, but like half melt is what it looks like <laughs> texture wise. Exactly. Okay, and this is going to add the fluffiness to to your 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 um, chocolate mousse. Yes, this is the final Oops. product. The other thing is like you have to give it a minimum of six hours in the fridge. Make sure that you know if you want to do it for dinner party, make it before you go to work. Put it in okay. the fridge, and then when you oh. have dinner party, you're good to go. I like the way you think. This is a really nice tip. Thank you so much for that. So that's the last sort of step. Keep yes. the fluff in there. This then gets poured into there. Yes, we're going to pour it into glasses. I mean, I like to give people individual ones, but you can do a big mm. one if you want to. Can I make a very big confession on national TV? And uh, you will see that our beautiful display of glasses here shows you what it should look like when it's done. Except that there happens to be one <laughs> that has got a slight indent. And I, I won't say that it was me, but you're welcome to insinuate that I may have or may not tested your recipe to see how good it was so that when I spoke about it on air I didn't feel too guilty about it so I snuck into your recipe I hope that's okay that you know what I actually love that you did that okay good. because now you can be honest and, and say that I love it okay yeah. good it really how is super it delicious is. so go get the recipe and the shopping list from our website afternoonexpress.co.za there you can find all the delicious treats we make on afternoon express this is how to make an espresso chocolate mousse brought to you by Chiara Torilli right here on afternoon express Bonnie's on standby the Revlon Love Squad are five of South Africa's top beauty bloggers with Bonang Mateva at the helm. Each week, they'll reveal their love and makeup secrets right here so we can flaunt a flawless face with the Revlon Color Stay Makeup Foundation. Today, we asked newlywed fashionista Aisha Baker, do you believe in love at first sight? I do believe in love at first sight, or rather love at first meeting. I think you can feel someone's energy when you first interact with them. And you can really decide, well as a woman anyway, you can really decide whether that's the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with or really love for the rest of your life. Aisha Baker and the Revlon Love Squad will be sharing their love tips and makeup tricks every Tuesday and Thursday, so don't miss the next episode for your beauty fix. Remember, you can follow the campaign online, hashtag Love Squad SA, on all social media platforms. Love is on. Speaking of love, you guys had me at chocolate mousse. <laughs> you said that you wanted your love fix. I thought I'd uh, help you get that, I guess. Whatever, Kiara well. made something super delicious. Oh, Kiara, it smells mm. amazing. So the last thing we're going to do before, uh, you, uh, you can go for it though. I really don't mind. I'm going for it, so stop me. a little bit extra chocolate. <laughs> I'm like, I just put a little bit of cocoa on you each know, one. The, big, the only fashion advice I ever got is like, if you're ever wanting to know like how to improve your look, always remove one item. This is like, no, <laughs> add more <laughs> items. because <laughs> like, more. don't apply to the same rules. Grazie, mm. signora. Okay. okay. Prego. Prego. I said mm. prego. Prego, mm. si. This is oh, yeah. amazing. Is it good? Mmm, it's like mm. rich, luxurious mm. chocolate. Mm. It's incredible. Mm. What do you think about the cocoa on top? Good? It's, um, it's OTT. <laughs> it is OTT. Well, on this delicious note, I must really say thank you to you. This is amazing. So Pleasure. cheers. I don't know if you yes. do that uh, in cheers. TV. Why not? And thank you so much to all of our other guests for joining us in the loft and really inspiring us on this Tuesday afternoon. So much great work going on in our country. People sharing their important stories. Yeah. Uh, continue to share with us on the social sites of how much you love the show today. What parts you think were your favorite? We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Good night. Happy eating.